Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Today is another highly requested one. It is all about making your team, building your party, team comps, and everything you need to know. Today I'm going to run down on the basis of building teams and what I usually consider when I build my own teams so you can get either your Spiral Abyss team, maybe your commissions team, or any other team comp that you need. So let's get right into the video, but first we have a word from our sponsor. Most of you here are gamers, and I know a lot of you have been asking for recommendations for peripherals. Well, today's sponsor is a wonderful place to start. Red Dragon makes all sorts of keyboards, mice, headsets, speakers, and more, you name it. I really think you should go check them out with my link in the description. And best of all, it's very affordable. Check out Red Dragon now and give your gaming setup an upgrade. Thanks again, Red Dragon, for sponsoring this video. Since everybody has a different set of characters and you might not have the same characters that I do, your team comps might look a little different from the ones that I make. But don't worry because there are still ways you can work around these things. I have timestamps in the description down below of the main tips and categories that I would like to cover, but let's start off with the most important thing that I always consider when building my teams. Heading over into the team menu, as you can see, I called this Ride a National team because this was originally my Ride a National, but I have the cute characters out today. I would think about the elemental reactions and what element each character is. So let's start out with a common reaction, which is an overload comp, which consists of pyro and electro and usually an animo crowd controller. I'll talk a little bit more about crowd controllers in a later bit of the video. Elemental reactions are a great way you can take down enemy shields or defeat enemies faster because some enemies have a resistance to certain elements. For example, if you're trying to fight an enemy that is cryo or hydro, you might want to use pyro or electro to take down the shield or to defeat it faster because it doesn't have resistance. Elemental reactions are my main key thing, so let's try building an overload comp right now. I'm going to use Kazuha as my crowd controller slash DPS so I can group all the enemies up together. Next, I'm going to have a pyro and an electro person in my team. Let's start out simple and let's use Xiangling because I know a lot of you have her, but if you don't, you can use Amber. And then I'm going to have Lisa, you can switch her out for Beto or Fischl, anything like that. And then I might have another person on the team, but so far this is already pretty good. Building teams around elemental reactions is a really good way to start. However, if you are starting out on Genshin and only have the first few characters, which are the Traveler, Amber, Lisa, and Kaya, then you might not always think about elemental reactions. But so far in that team comp, you can already do quite a few. There are a lot of elemental reactions and a really common one are Melt and Vaporize because they deal a lot more damage and they can crit. Melt and Vaporize consist of Pyro and Cryo or Hydro and Pyro. It's where you apply the element to the other element and it creates that damage. But to decide which elemental reactions you're going to use, you obviously need to take a look at the enemies. For example, if I were to fight the Cryo Regis Vine, it's already Cryo, so I wouldn't want to bring a Cryo person on my team. I would think about if the enemy has a shield. So if the enemy does have a shield, I'd want someone to break it. That's why I'm going to use Bennett, because Bennett can apply pyro and he's really fast at doing it. Next, I would think about what elemental reactions would probably work better for a cryo enemy. I probably wouldn't do frozen because you can't freeze the cryo regis vine, so I would most likely go with overload, so I'd pick an electro person. Already these two, Bennett and Fischl, would work well because they are an overload members of the team. But some important things you note when you're thinking about the enemies are the shields. In the Spiral Abyss, shields can be very important, especially taking them down quickly, since the shields can stop you from dealing the maximum damage on the enemy, especially for the Fatui. So that's why you would want to bring a character that can break down those shields. If you have an enemy with a cryo shield, you would bring a pyro character. If you have an enemy with an electro shield, you would bring a cryo character and also a pyro character works too. For a geo shield, you would also bring a geo character. And for a hydro shield, electro and pyro work too. If it's an animal shield, any other element will also work. For the pyro shields, you're gonna wanna use hydro. You can also use cryo, but I recommend hydro since it takes it down a lot faster. If you want to find out more about shields, I recommend looking on the Genshin Wiki. 
and you'll find out about the enemies that you're fighting. Normally when you do a domain, you're going to get a list of the enemies you're fighting, especially for the Ascension and Spiral Abyss, so you can obviously prepare for that. So choose your team according to what enemies you're going to be fighting. Sometimes I don't even use my default teams in Spiral Abyss just because the enemies don't really match up with the team that I'm using. Sometimes I can use a team that is completely new to me and something I would never use in the open world, but just because of the enemies, I would change my team that way. Now for another big thing that you should consider are skill cooldowns. So skill cooldowns depend for each character, and some of them have really long skill cooldowns and some have short ones. An example of a character with a short skill cooldown is going to be Bennett, as for a longer one you might say Barbara. For Bennett you can press E and then you see the cooldown runs in the corner and it's going out really really soon so you can do E again. But for Barbara, once you click E, you have to wait about 30 seconds before her next time you can use E, although it does last a little bit longer. So what I think about are which characters I'm going to use and what order I'm going to use them in. This is an example of the team that I would use. First, I would start out by applying Electro to the enemy, and then I would use the Kazuha Hold E skill. And then the next thing I normally would do is use Shincho, and then use Bennett and then switch again to Kazuha. The reason I use the characters in the specific order is because of their skill cooldowns. Since Shincho has a really long skill cooldown, as you can see it's still running, and Bennett has a really short one, as well as Raiden has a semi-short one, I need to know which order I'm going to use the characters in. So you don't want to make a team full of characters with really long skill cooldowns because you won't have this constant damage. If you also choose characters with really short skill cooldowns, that might not be the best option for you because you're going to be wasting a lot of time flipping through characters and trying to apply their skills as fast as you can. You can't switch characters that fast. There's a cooldown for switching your characters. So that's probably why I wouldn't say anybody with a skill cooldown that's super short is going to work because you have to keep in mind the time you're going to be switching the characters and the character order that you're going to use. So make sure you consider how long each person's skill cooldown is. If you are unsure of their skill cooldowns, go over to the talents page and then click on their skill and you will find the cooldown which is under CD. Sometimes the character might have different skill cooldowns, like for the press, the hold, and the charge damage, but some characters might also have just one skill cooldown. So if you are curious about your character's skill cooldown, you can click on their skill attributes and look under here. On the topic of cooldowns, I'd also like to talk about energy. You probably know a lot about energy recharge, or maybe some of you don't know so much, but energy is how you're able to run your burst and you will get energy particles after you apply your skill or defeat an enemy. The bursts here are on a cooldown but also have an energy cost. Some of them are really low energy costs and some of them are extremely high energy costs. When you make your team, you want to think about how much are the character's energy costs. Instead of looking under the E skill talent, you want to look under their burst and you will find their energy costs here around the cooldown. So the trick is to balance out characters with a high energy cost plus a low energy cost so that you can use their bursts and you don't have to wait for either the burst cooldown or to wait for energy to build up. What I like to do is mix and match characters with high energy costs and low energy costs. The reason why I like to mix them is because I'm able to apply some of the bursts really fast and then some of the bursts take a little more time, but they have a lot more damage. So for example, while I'm waiting for Xingqiu's burst to build up, I can use Kazuha's skill and his burst, so I'm not just letting Xingqiu sit there and waste his burst time, and I'm able to apply it as soon as possible. It is a little confusing to get, but the main goal is to spread out the characters that have a high energy cost for their burst and a low energy cost. The next way you can build teams is by their elemental resonance. Elemental Resonance can be found up here, and it's basically if you have two of the same element in your party. Here is an example of a party setup that I might use if I'm doing a vaporized comp, although this might not be the most recommended. I can still see that I have Elemental Resonance activated, where it gives you buffs based on the character Elemental Resonance. So for Pyro, as you can see, I'll be affected by Cryo for less time, and it will increase my attack by 25%. 
and that can be pretty good if you need that little attack bonus. As for Hydro, it will give you some healing bonus. If you want to, you can have two members from the same element on your team, but sometimes that can be really hard depending on which characters you have. And if you might not even have two characters from the same element, then you might not be able to do that elemental resonance. But it is still something you can consider when you're building your teams. So those are going to be my main considerations while I'm building your teams, but here are some key people that you should add into your team or I recommend you to add. You don't have to do all of them, but here are some important things that I think about when I'm building my team. The first person is going to be a healer. Now, if you're wondering, well, how do I know which characters are healers or not? Usually you can see it in their talent or they would talk about it if you were to look up the character. The big well-known healers are Barbara, Jean, Diona, all those characters, but Barbara is going to be a common healer. You can see if they're a healer by looking at their talents, and as you can see, it will regenerate HP, as well as Diona's Burst can also regenerate HP, and same for Jean. Now, it's important to have a healer on your team in case you might be running low on HP and you're in something like Spiral Abyss where you can't use food to heal. Now, if your only healer is Barbara and you don't really like using her or you don't want to build her, you can either pull for a healer, but also Kaya kind of works as a healer too. But there is another option for you too and it is to have a shielder on your team. A common shielder you might know is Noelle, or maybe even Shinyan if you play her sometimes. But these two characters can activate a shield when you do their e-skill. So instead of having a healer that will heal you, these characters will activate a shield that will protect you from possibly getting attacked by any enemies. Now depending on how well you do build their shields, which you need to put in some consideration when you're building their shields, like you want to stack defense so that they are able to block out enemy attacks, but sometimes a shieler can be an option if you don't like playing healers or if you don't have a healer. The next really important character that is in your team comp is going to be a crowd controller. If you don't know what I mean by a crowd controller, I'm talking about a character that will scoop up the enemies, usually using a skill or a burst, and will group them up together so that you can apply your bursts and skills to enemies without having to run around and gather the enemies that way. A very popular one is Kazuha, or if you have Venti, or even Sucrose works well, she's a 4 star. Heizu kind of works, but I haven't gotten to try him out yet, he's still level 1. Or even Jean can sometimes work like that too. I'm going over to a group of enemies right now so I can show you how a crowd controller would work. So let's test it out on these hilly trails. Into the wind. So as you can see what I just did, I grouped up these enemies together so Welcome now I can apply the burst and deal damage to these enemies. For Jean it works too, they would just lift up the enemies and then push them to a certain area. Barbados, guide us. Where there she can apply the burst and deal damage. So if you are planning to build a team and you're in Spiral Abyss, I recommend this for floor 9 where there were some treasure hoarders or if you're even doing the ley lines in floor 11 I believe, it really works to have a crowd controller so that you can avoid running around the floors and wasting your stamina getting to the enemies and instead have the enemies come to you. The next thing is pretty obvious and it's to have a main DPS. I'm pretty sure a lot of you have a designated main DPS. It's usually your main person that you would run in most of your teams and are the main ones dealing all the damage. Usually you do their normal attacks to them or you would build them so that they deal the most damage. That would be for me Rosaria, she's my physical DPS so her main goal is to do physical damage and she sometimes runs in super conduct teams or freeze teams. The main DPS's job is just to do the damage. What you want to do is invest most of your resources in building this one character that is going to deal most of your damage in the team and is supported by the support characters you place on your team. So if I were to build a freeze team, I would have Rosaria and then maybe another cryo unit like Kaya and then Xingqiu and maybe Barbara. This could be an example of a freeze team you might do. I chose the characters on my team based on what my main DPS was. Now if I had a pyro main DPS, a freeze team might not be the best, but you can have a melt team where you freeze the enemy to melt them later. If your main DPS is Kli, you don't want Kaya or Xing Cho to be doing most of the damage. You want it to be Kli, so build your team to support Kli in that way. This team would freeze the enemies so that Kli can do melt 
and then deal more damage. Main DPSs are key to dealing consistent damage so that you are guaranteed to have someone dealing damage at all times. Always look up a build guide before building your character if you want to maximize your damage and potential, but again, you can play the game however you want, I'm just here to give you some tips. The final thing that I consider is something that's not talked about as often as I see, but it is to have a buffer or someone that can increase your damage either by a skill or talent that they have, or their artifact set, or maybe even their weapon. A good example of that would be Bennett. People say Bennett is really good and I fully agree with that because Bennett can buff your team's attack where they will gain an extra attack bonus and also can get healed. If the character doesn't have the talent where they can give an attack bonus, you might want to run the Noblesse Oblige artifact set. If you run the 4 piece set on your characters and you use this character's burst, you can give other party members 20% attack bonus. If you are running the 4-piece Noblesse Oblige set, I recommend it to only run it on one character in your party at the time because you cannot stack this effect, which means you cannot have a 40% attack bonus if you run it on two people. It doesn't work like that. But you can run the 2-piece set and you'll still get the buff from it. Another really good support set that is talked about a lot for animal characters is the Viridescent set. It's where the enemy's resistance to that element that you swirled it with will decrease. So for example, if I had Electro on the character and I swirled with Animo in the 4-piece set, they would decrease their resistance to that element, which is Electro, and I would be able to deal more Electro damage. So depending on which characters run the Viridescent set or whoever runs the Noblesse set, you might want to have one of those characters on your team. I know that seemed like a lot of information, and if you need to go back in the timestamps and rewatch a certain part, feel free to do that or ask questions in the comments. If there's a certain part that you'd like me to emphasize on, I can make a separate video or I can make a short explanation about it. But here's a quick recap and the main things to remember. Elemental reactions, the enemies you're fighting, skill cooldowns, burst energy cost, elemental resonance, and then the main key people you might want to add to your team are either a healer or shielder, a crowd control, a main DPS, and a buffer. Hopefully with these team building tips, you're able to build a really successful Spiral Abyss team. If you need suggested teams, you can always look up the character's name and then team comps, and you're sure to find a lot of different options. So overall, I really hope this was helpful and clarified a few things. Again, please ask questions in the comments, I'll try to get to most of them. And thank you so much for all the support. Mm, check out the description for more information, and I hope to see you in the next video. So I hope you all have a wonderful day, good luck on your pulls on the Yoimiya banner or on the weapon banner, and I'll see you all really soon. Thank you and have an amazing day.